Welcome back to Real Shit, where we like to talk real shit all day, every day, all for the love of movies. I am Joe. Before I get into it, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Any little bit of feedback or support would be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, I'm going to get right into it because I have plenty to talk about here today. So, since Corona pretty much shut everything down, um, in my mind, I was thinking that possibly Hollywood could... I guess regroup, take the chance to kind of recharge their batteries, and I don't know why I thought this, but maybe possibly do things a little bit differently, since they have extra time now. They've had all this time, they've had months now to plan things out, look at things differently, and possibly come up with a strategy that would maybe, I guess, change the way that they do things, and but they obviously didn't use that time wisely, because now... We're getting all these reports that everything's starting back up, but it appears that most of these announcements are once again uh, about remakes and the possibility of them taking old properties and updating them in 2020. And I just don't understand what they're hoping to accomplish with this. Like, they had all this extra time, again, to possibly come up with a new strategy and they just come back and do the same exact thing as when before corona even started and i don't know why i expected them to do anything differently i mean unfortunately a lot of people go to these movies anyway and as long as that happens of course they're never going to change their ways because they're still making money and that's the ultimate goal here it's not about creating something that's going to stand the test of time anymore it's about creating something that's relevant in that moment just so you can get some tickets and um get a little bit of cash so essentially what they're doing now is they're taking these old properties once again and they want to update them and they want to play on the fact that you might have nostalgia for these things and it's not anything new necessarily but again i was hoping that maybe this would wake them up a little bit and possibly but i know at this point i should have figured this at this point, since they've now not basically been working for four months, I'm sure a lot of Hollywood people just want to get back to work and just want to start pumping shit out. And we're just going to get the same mediocre shit that we got before all this started. But it's just some of the news that I hear um, about the movies that they are talking about remaking. And I'm just, it boggles my mind exactly why they think any of this is going to work. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is probably going to be the, um, I guess the most talked about one that I've seen online, and that's the Pirates of the Caribbean remake, or reboot, I should say. It's not actually a remake, but it's a reboot. It's still, it's still using an older property and trying to cash in on it, um, but apparently they're going the gender swap um, route, and now Marco Robbie is going to be the lead. I guess in place of Johnny Depp, who was the lead in the previous movies. Okay, a few things on this. So, first of all, a lot of people are bashing Margot Robbie right now. I'm not going to do that. I believe that Margot Robbie is a quality actress when given the right material. Now, I think she should stay away from stuff like this, because stuff like this has a bad stigma attached to it, which is the whole reason that I'm even talking about it right now. Um, stuff like this is doesn't have any lasting impression on anyone half the time i mean if you really want to say that pirates of the caribbean it has a fan base but that fan base is mostly dedicated to the first three movies i like the first three movies i thought they were fine for what they were everything since then really hasn't performed well at the box office and there has been no personal connection from what i can see from just the general movie going audience so to try and revive Pirates of the Caribbean and even trying to do it without its main star and Johnny Depp, which was pretty much the whole selling point to begin with, I just don't see how this is going to work. So by Margot Robbie attaching herself to it, she's automatically putting herself behind the eight ball. She's setting herself up for failure. And I'm sure people are just going to equate this with Birds of Prey, which... Look, for everything, for all the flaws in Birds of Prey, I even said that I thought Birds of Prey was actually better than Suicide Squad, but I think Suicide Squad is one of the worst DC movies ever, so that's not saying a whole lot, but I don't think that that movie was as terrible as everyone made it out to be, 
But that stigma is going to carry over into Pirates of the Caribbean because now she has that attached to her. And she's also a producer on this movie, which she was on, on Birds of Prey. So that is going to have an effect on how people view this movie. I think she should stay away from these big budget genre movies for a while and just go and be an actress. I mean, if you think about the stuff she's been in, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I've praised that movie many times, and I even praise her performance in it. I know a lot of people say she didn't get enough screen time, but I think she was great in it for what she was given. She did exactly what she was supposed to do in that movie. Um, Wolf of Wall Street, same thing. That was the first time I ever remember really seeing her. And again, she's playing kind of a generic, I guess you could say trophy wife type woman in it. But she had something that made you pay attention to her. And not just her looks, because she's a beautiful woman, but she had a little bit more to actually make you take notice and be like, oh, she's going to be somebody. And then her biggest accomplishment, I think, is I, Tanya, where she plays Tanya Harding. And I thought she crushed that. I mean, she should have. I don't know. I don't remember if she was actually nominated for an Oscar, but if she wasn't, she should have been. Um, that was one of her best performances by far. And, and again, it just goes to show you that it, 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 she is a capable actress, but sometimes she gets stuck in the wrong roles and she just picks the wrong roles. Um, and the Johnny Depp factor is a thing because Johnny Depp has a lot of sympathy right now because of the whole Amber Heard situation. So I don't think a lot of people want to see him replaced right now either. I think that could possibly have an effect on the way people view this movie too. I mean, overall, I just think Pirates of the Caribbean is a dead franchise anyway. It's just Disney doing what they do and trying to milk the properties that they have for everything they're worth. That's what they do on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So I'm not surprised, but I think it's a shame that certain people are going to get, I guess, wrapped up in this whole thing. And people like Margot Robbie, who actually is talented, might face difficult times because of her attaching herself to this movie so we'll see how that goes but i don't have any faith in it or have any desire to watch it um the other one that they were talking about this week was twister and i made a separate video about this but now i'm just going to kind of give you my thoughts on it and this one in one big one big i guess rant against modern remakes but i'm just going to put it like this twister while not a perfect movie, I'm not saying that by any stretch of the means, I have a sentimental connection to Twister. It's just one of those fun 90s movies that I remember watching with my family back in the day. And we just got a lot out of it. It's extremely quotable. I think the cast in it is great. Um, it has a certain amount of charm that a lot of mid to late 90s um, big budget action type movies had during that time. Um, Independence Day... The Mummy, this, a lot of movies like that would seem shallow, but they had a little bit more to them, in my personal opinion, a little bit more, like you actually gave a shit about the characters, and I think that's something that Twister definitely had, and it's something that I don't think can be replicated in 2020, like, if you listen to any of my reviews, every time I review a new movie, half of them just seem so shallow to me they seem hollow they seem uninspiring and i feel like that's the treatment that twister is going to get it's going to get a big budget remake and it's going to be all cgi there's not going to be any heart behind it you're not going to give a shit about any of the characters it's going to be generic and bland and we've seen this a million times like i don't know why anybody thinks it's going to be any different and i'm not again i'm not even saying that the original twister is shakespeare but compared to what they're most likely going to do now there's no purpose because I don't think that you can update this story and you can make it better than it was. I mean, Twister is what it is. and I don't think it needs any kind of updating or continuation or anything like that. Um, and there's a certain thing to be said because they can't do the same exact story either because the technology is so advanced now that studying tornadoes can't necessarily be your plot line anymore. So they're going to have to come up with something completely different. And I don't even think that they're capable of doing that. And having it being as interesting as the whole personal vendetta against Twisters and studying them that the two main characters had in the original movie. So that's my thoughts on that. And the other movie that they were talking about, this was somewhat recently, is The Princess Bride. Um, I believe they're doing it with, uh, I think it's Nick Jonas. Whatever Jonas brother is, um, is dating Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner, of course, is famous from Game of Thrones. Now, I don't necessarily think that either of them are top quality actors or actresses, but 
I'm going to have to say that this is a really bad idea, not just because of that, but first of all, Princess, Princess Bride, while I love it, I think it's a great movie. Um, it's one of those movies that I grew up on. I think it's kind of a niche thing. Like a lot of people that I talk to don't like that movie. So I don't think it's as quite as universally loved as maybe the studio is thinking that it is. And yes, there are going to be people who have a strong connection to that movie, but I've actually talked to people who don't like that movie. I don't know why, but there is a strong amount of people who don't care for that movie. So I don't know that this is necessarily the cash cow that the studio is thinking that it's going to be. Um, it could be a flop you know, for all intents and purposes, and I think it will be. And again, it's it's a mo it's a niche movie, but it's also a movie that has a lot of charm, and it was a product of its time, and it just came out at the right time. And it was one of those movies that floated around in Hollywood for a long time, and and it took forever to get made, and it got passed around from person to person, and and it was very difficult to get off the ground. And I guess when Rob Reiner came on board, that's when it all changed, and he slowly kind of put it together and made it what it was, but. It's not a movie that's for everyone, and I don't necessarily think that it needs the remake treatment. I mean, I always say, if you're going to remake a movie, you have to make it better, or at least take the idea of that movie and try to introduce something new to it. Because if you're going to do it the exact same way, then there's absolutely no point. But I don't necessarily know that there's anything about that story that needs to be expanded upon. Um, could you show more of, I guess... Wesley in his pirate days, sure. Is it necessary to the story? I don't think so. Um, could you see the six-figure man um, killing uh, Montoya's father? I guess you could, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, that's part of the charm of the story is there's stuff happening off screen that we don't get to see but it's still, we still have an understanding of what happened and who these characters are and what their motivations are. And I think that's the cool thing about it is that not everything is spoon fed to you. Like you don't get to see everything. You hear things through legends sometimes. And that's what's really cool about it too because it's, it's a fairy tale. It's a storybook story. So you're not supposed to see everything. And I like how they, they had legends in it basically. And you kind of found it out through their general conversations between each other, what they've all been through. And that's cool, but that's the only thing I could think of that they could possibly expand upon is actually showing you those things. But again, again, if you do that, you're removing part of the appeal of the original movie. So, also a phenomenal cast, by the way. So, I don't necessarily see the, the point in remaking the princess bride either because i just don't think that it's necessary in my personal opinion the princess bride is as good as it's possibly as it could ever be now there's some people who don't like it at all as i mentioned but in my personal opinion it is what it is it's it was made during that time it's something that we can always look back on it's something that i'll watch for the rest of my life but it's not something that i need to be elaborated on and i definitely don't need it with no offense, a Jonas brother and probably one of the worst actor actresses actors on Game of Thrones. Now, has a lot to do with her character, of course. Her character was pretty annoying in my opinion, but I don't necessarily see them as these personalities that pull in the moviegoers and just say, "Oh, Sophie, Sophie Turner's in this movie. I got to go see it." So you don't even have the star appeal. To make just your random everyday moviegoer want to go see the movie. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's just a lot of Hollywood attempting to live off the past. It's laziness is what it is. And it's the whole reason that I started this channel. Um, I wanted to start this channel because I'm frustrated about where entertainment is right now. It, we're in a place where... Everything is just so uncreative, like, it's just, it seems like they're just constantly trying to take the easy way out and just cash in on nostalgia. And nostalgia can be good sometimes, it really can, if used in the correct way. Like, a perfect example would be the, the story about Michael Keaton within the past couple of days. Like, bringing him back and introducing him into a, another movie universe. Again, that's, you can't do that in every movie, but... Rather than trying to remake 
whatever Michael Keaton's Batman or remake that world without him. They're bringing his world to this world and combining them. Like that to me is much more interesting from a from a nostalgia point of view than just taking that world and plugging other actors into it because again the reason we love these movies is because of the original people involved with them and half the time the original people are not involved with them um, if Carrie Elways is not in Princess Bride I don't think it's as good of a movie if Robin Wright Penn is not in the Princess Bride I don't think that it's as good of a movie if Andre the Giant is not in Princess Bride I don't think it's that good of a movie um, if Bill Paxton is not in Twister, I don't think it's that good of a movie. If Johnny Depp is not in Pirates, it's not that good of a movie. Even the ones, some of the ones that he was in weren't that good of movies. So what makes you think it's going to work without him? You can't just take these properties and just plug new people into them and think magic is going to happen again. Lightning only strikes once most of the time in the same spot. So I don't know. This is just some of my thoughts on this, I guess, another remake craze that we're about to happen. That's about to happen um, once Hollywood gets up and running again. I want I want to know you guys' thoughts on all this. Um, do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? I'd like to know exactly where your heads are on this and where you are on remakes. And I want to make it clear that I'm not entirely against the idea of remakes. It's just I don't think that they're being done for the correct reasons and being handled in the right way in modern Hollywood. Um, and that's just my thoughts, but I'd be interested to hear what everyone else has to say. Let's continue this discussion in the comments down below. Um, as always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out.